young brothers. Because a lot of young brothers don't want to stop, but y'all are intelligent. When they told you that this is Jesus, right? Did they open the Bible and show you that this is Jesus in the Bible? Did you ever read in the Bible that this guy's Jesus? Did so then how do we know that, So how do we know that this is Jesus then? How do you hey, know brother. that this is Jesus? We were, say that again, young man. He said social construct. This young man is super tired. That's beautiful, brother. We gotta give, give the brother a hand for that. Give the young brother a hand for that. I'm not trying to, yo, I'm not trying to embarrass you, but that's beautiful, young man. Seriously. Social construct and social engineering. We're told that this is Jesus Christ, but the Bible tells you Jesus Christ looks like this guy right here. Hold us for a second, I see y'all. The Bible tells you, when you read the Bible and actually open it up, the Bible tells you Christ looks like Jesus, like this guy right here. This guy right here, this guy's name is Caesar Borgias. Caesar Borgias was the second son of Pope Alexander the Sixth. Brother, do me a favor, right? One second, please. This guy right here, this guy's name is Caesar Borgias. In the year 1492, Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, you ever heard of them? Now y'all probably thought those were Ninja Turtles, right? No, okay. Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, they were painters during the Renaissance, right? In the year 1492, they painted this image and said that this was Jesus Christ. Prior to 1492, which is only about maybe 600 years ago, prior to 1492, there was no such thing as a white image of Jesus Christ. But when you go in the Bible, the Bible tells you that Christ looked like this. Let's get that, somebody. Give me the book of Revelations, the first chapter. I'm sorry? Absolutely. Revelations chapter 1, and give me verse 1. Uh, Magan, do me a favor. If you could get me the Reina Valera in Spanish, let me get that so we can show you. It says it in English, and it says it in Spanish as well. So let's prove all things. The Bible says prove all things. So first of all, we're gonna, I'm going to get to that in a second. So first of all, let's read it in English. Revelations chapter 1, verse 1. Read. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. When you go to the Spanish Bible, you go to the last book, Apocalipsis, capítulo 1, verse 1. Right? Read. Read verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So the Bible says that Christ's head and his hairs were white like wool. Let's deal with the color first, right? Where's the other image? Where's my head? Okay. Hold this, um, somebody hold this image up for me. Matter of fact, Jaleel, hold this image up for me. The Bible says Christ's head and his hairs were white like wool. When we look at this image, right? Hold it so people can see it. When we look at this image, does this guy have white hair? He doesn't have white hair. But the Bible says Christ has white hair. What does it say in Spanish, Magun? You got it? Yes. Y su cabeza y sus cabellos eran blancos como la lana blanca. That's the same thing that we read in English. Su cabeza y su cabellos eran blanca como la lana blanca. So the lana is lana is what? That's woolly. Black brown. Does this guy have woolly hair? Pelo como lana. Woolly hair, so it's not white and it's not woolly. So that's strike one right. and strike two. Right. But this image has white hair right. and woolly hair. And so this image lines up with the Bible. This image does not. Read on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Read on. And his feet like unto fine brass. So the Bible says Christ's feet were like the color of brass. Brass is the color of a penny. This guy is not the color of a penny. This guy is white. This guy is more the color of brass. Read it in Spanish. Y sus ojos como llama de fuego, y sus pies semejantes a latón fino, al dientes como en un horno. Latón fino in Spanish, like fine brass in English. What color is latón fino? It's like that color, not this color. So this guy is not the image that the Bible tells us it is. So who is this guy? This guy is an imposter. His name is Caesar Borgias. The image was painted in the year 1492 by Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, who also happened to be homosexual lovers. That's historically recorded, right? So this image was put up, and then Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, what else did they do in 1492? They came over here to the New World with Christopher Columbus. And the Indians, when they came to the Indians, they forced Christianity on the Indians, and the law of Christianity, they forced the Indians to worship this image. And the Indians that did not worship this image, they were put to death. That's a fact. Man. 
That's why everybody believes he was white. Now, you're very young, but you guys are smart. So I'm gonna give you another test. Have you ever seen the movie Roots? Roots. Have you ever heard about Roots? You've seen a little bit of Roots. All right, well, in the movie Roots, which you guys can get on YouTube, look at that movie Roots, right? When you read about Kunta Kente. Give him the mic, let, him, let me hear him say. She's shy, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. He said he was fast and he was running, right? Right. Okay. Say bad credit, good credit. Right. So, yeah. So anyway, when you watch the movie about Roots, right? Kunta Kente, when they caught him when he was running away, they hung him by his hands, right? And they whipped him. Remember that? Maybe you saw it. They said, what's your name? He said, my name is Kunta Kente. He said, Psh. what's your name? He said, my name is Kunta Kente. He whipped him again. Psh. He said, what's your name? He said, my name is Toby. So they broke his spirit. That's the same thing they did with this image right here in slavery. They whipped us, beat us, and killed us until we accepted this image. And we didn't accept this image because it was in the Bible. We accepted this image because we didn't want to be beaten. We didn't want to be, we were forced. And you smart, y'all smart, man. Not only did we do that, we taught it to our children because we didn't want the master to harm our children. And then they taught it to their children. And they taught it to their children. And that's why through social engineering, that's why our people believe that that's Christ now. That's right. And that's why these rappers, they be wearing these Jesus pieces. Those are not Jesus pieces because Jesus is black. That's this guy, Caesar Borgias. Go ahead. This is Revelation 13 and 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And that's what happened to slavery. As many as our people would not worship the image of the beast in slavery, they were killed, man. You see, when people say that there's no hope for the youth, man, I present these four young men right here, man. That's, right. that's a beautiful thing, man. I'll put the most high. Bless y'all, brothers, man. Yo, we always out here. Y'all can always come and ask any questions, man. Where y'all going now? Just walking around, gonna go play some basketball and stuff like that. That's what's up, man. I respect y'all, brothers, man. Y'all young man, and we, we appreciate you, brothers, stopping, man. Y'all have any questions y'all want to ask us? Also, also inside the $2 bill, it's also a black person. Who's, what's his name? Uh, it's okay if you don't know. Do any of y'all know? My mother said that he was, he was a cousin. John? John? John Hancock. John Hancock. He's got his brothers on point, man. All praise to the most. Yeah, you're a round of Give applause. Give another hand, man. Y'all are all smart, so don't worry about it. You see that, Yoshi, man? Because they're your age. You see that? That's what we're talking about, man. We're out here trying to raise up our youth, man. Listen, do me a favor, right? Y'all stay out of trouble. Don't sell drugs to your own people. That's right. Don't join no gangs. Because that's what the white man wants, man. He wants all of you young brothers, man, to be in prison. Because that's the way the society is set up, man. It's set up that the only way a black man could get out the ghetto is to play basketball, play football, or be a rapper. But you brothers have more potential, and you greater than that, man. Because you are the greatest people that ever lived, and all the great people of history look like you. Jesus Christ was a black man. King James was a black man. King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table were black men. All those were black men. Hannibal? Henry the Eighth? Henry? He was a black man. That's right. You brothers are on point. So you have a great history, man. You weren't swinging around on trees in Africa and then brought to America butt naked and made slaves. Because that's what they teach you in school, man. When you learn Black History Month, what is Black History Month starts in slavery and ends with the Civil Rights Movement. That's what they teach you in school. That's all you ever learn about yourselves is you were slaves, then Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation and made you free. And then you started marching for your rights in the civil rights movement, and here you are today. No, you were kings, you were queens, you were princes, you were princesses, all the great sciences and technologies of the world, you created, man. You're what makes America great. We are what makes America run. Don't you ever forget that, man. Don't let anybody ever tell you nothing, man. There's nothing wrong with listening to rap music, because I grew up on rap music, but a lot of these rappers, they're not teaching you nothing, man. They're not telling you who you are, how great you are. All they're telling you about is how many women you can have, 
how much money you can have, so forth and so on. But we're telling you something greater than that, man. You're great in your things. Never forget that, all right? All right. I appreciate y'all stopping, man. Check out that paper. Read that information, too. Definitely. That's our website on there as well, all right? Yeah. Most high bless y'all, brothers, man. We appreciate it. All right? No doubt. Give me, um... Right, so that's a beautiful thing, man. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, it says, train up a child in the way they should grow. So that when they get old, they will not depart from it. You see what I'm saying? Now, those young men, the possibility is they have parents or somebody in their life that's giving them a little bit of information, man, because you can see that they're different than the average youth that stopped right, by here, So right. I say, all praise to the Most High for that, man. And I'm going to say this too, man. We cannot give up on our youth. When people all wonder why you guys stand out on the corners and you yelling and you're screaming because we love our people, man. We're not going to give up on our people. We love our people. It's tough love because it's truth. And a lot of our people don't want to deal with truth. But all the same, we love you. That's why we come out here. We're out here in the wintertime when it's brick cold. Yep. When we can't even turn the pages of the Bible. We come right. out here because that's love. We out here when it's hot as hell and we sweating. But we out here because it's love, man. We're out here to warn you, man. The Most High loves our nation. The Most High wants to deliver our nation. So the Most High is giving you warning through his prophets and his teachers. So now, read for me our second, um, uh, give me the book of Second Ezra, the ninth chapter. Let's get into some prophecy. Ezra, Second Ezra chapter 9. We're going to get into some prophecy real quick. I'm not going to be long. But we're in the end times, so we got to talk about what's about to happen. Because America is circling the drain, man. It's circling the drain. Just like when you pull the plug out the bath, you take a bath, and you pull up the plug out the bathtub, and you see the water circling the drain as it's going down, that's America, man. America's finished. Why? Because America has broken every single commandment in the Bible. America says, in God we trust. That's on your money. You say, in God we trust, but as soon as we open up the Bible, you are in violation of every single commandment in Exodus, the 20th chapter, alone. Honor thy father and thy mother. America don't teach that. Thou shalt not steal. America doesn't apply that. Thou shalt not lie. America doesn't apply that. Have no other gods before me. America doesn't apply that. You see? And then you're wondering why the Most High is cursing America. The Most High is cursing America because America took the name of God in its mouth and violated God's commandments. So America must be destroyed. God. And if you so-called blacks and Hispanics don't wake up, if you don't repent, some of you are going to go down with America as well because that's also prophesied. But nonetheless, we come out here to teach our people. Read what you got. Second Ezra chapter 9. Start from verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Right, so the most I told Ezra to measure the time. How do you measure the time? You look at what's going on in the world and you compare it to prophecy. And when you do that comparative analysis, you're going to realize we're in the end. We are in the time where the Most High will begin to visit the earth which he has made. That's the time that we're living in right now. Read on. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. Right, so there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars. But I know what the unbelievers will say. Well, there's always been earthquakes. But the Bible tells you that this, is, this time we're living in is going to be as a woman in travail. What is a woman in travail? A woman in travail is a woman in labor. Her birth pains are far apart, but the closer we come to that delivery of that child, the pains and the pains get closer and closer and closer and closer. Such it is with prophecy. Yes, there's always been earthquakes, but now we're having major earthquakes every week. Hell, almost every day. That's a sign. They're getting closer and closer together. We're seeing that. Why? Because it's one of the tokens and one of the signs that the Most High is going to begin to visit the earth, man. Read. Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. Right, so the Most High spoke about these things from the beginning through the prophets. That's again going back to what I said before. The Most High always sends prophets first. And the Most High warns our people about what's about to happen before it happens. Per adventure that a certain remnant of Israel will get themselves together so they won't get caught up in that destruction. The Most High always warns us, man. The Most High is a just God, man. The Most High is not going to allow the so-called white man to bring down martial law and terror on our people without first telling you in the Bible it's going to happen. Right. The problem is, 
that we go to church on Sunday, I see you walking down the block, you got the Bible under your arm, and you proud, but you never read it. Because had you read it, you would know what's in it. You would know what time we're living in. You would know about Matthew's the 24th chapter. But you don't do that, man. What you do, you go to church, they sing a nice song, a nice dance, you feel good, you go home, and when somebody asks you, what did pastor talk about in church today? You say, well, I don't know, but it sure as hell was good. That's the problem with a lot of you so-called blacks and Hispanics. That's the problem. The Bible says the Most High is a God of knowledge, not a God of traditions and singing songs and dancing. See, read. For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings in wonders and powerful works and endings in effects and signs. Right, so the Most High says all things in creation have a beginning and an end. Let's look at history. The Egyptian empire had a beginning. When was the Egyptian empire's beginning? The Egyptian empire's beginning was during the time of Menes, also known as Nama, when lower and upper Egypt was united for the first time. That was the beginning of the empire. What was the end of the Egyptian empire? Samtik the third or Samtik the second, either one. That was the beginning, that was the end. Let's take it to more modern times. There was a time when they said the sun never set on the British Empire because Britain had provinces and colonies all over the world. It was a superpower, but guess what? Not no more. What about the Roman Empire? Same thing. What about the Greek Empire? Same thing. What about the Babylonian Empire? Same thing. All those kingdoms came, they were great, and they fell. But for some strange reason, so-called blacks and Hispanics, you think America's gonna go on forever. But your Bible is telling you otherwise. And we're coming out here trying to tell you, come back to this book and read it. It tells you everything you need to know. Read. And everyone that shall be saved, and shall be able to escape by his works and by his faith, whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils. And that's what we're out here talking about. Everyone that shall be saved, shall be saved by his works and his faith. Works and faith go hand in hand, your works and your faith. That's how you're gonna be delivered. Economics is not gonna get you so-called blacks and Hispanics out the condition that you're saying. Now don't get me wrong, ain't nothing wrong with having some money. The Bible tells you money is a defense. So there's nothing wrong with having some money, but our works and our faith is what's gonna deliver us. Understand that, read. Shall be preserved from the said pearls and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Right, so the Most High said he sanctified a certain number of Israelites from the beginning. The, the elect were chosen from the beginning, from the foundation of this earth. The Most High already prophesied in the spirit who is going to be delivered, who is going to take heed to this word, and who is not. So now what we're out here doing, we're fishing, like Christ said. Christ said he would make us fishers of men. So we're out here fishing for the Most High's elect. How are we fishing for you? With this word, man. Because if you are part of the Most High's elect, this word will resonate with you automatically. Christ said, my sheep hear my voice, and I am known of them. When you read the book of Mark, the first and the second chapter, when Christ called the apostles, read those stories. When Christ called the apostles, Christ did not give the apostles the breakdown for Daniel's 11 and Daniel's 10 Daniel's 9 and Revelation 12, Christ simply said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And the Bible says straight away, they cast down their nets and they follow Christ. Why? Because it was already predestined from the beginning. This is not hard, this is easy. So if it's meant for you, you're going to get it. If it's not meant for you, you're not going to get it. As simple and as plain as that. Read. Then shall they be in pitiful case which now have abused my way. Right, the Bible says you shall be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. That's our people. We are abusing the ways of the Most High, and we are in pitiful case. Look at us, man. Go to World Star Hip Hop and look at the condition of our people. We're being shot down and killed in the streets by the police. The government is injecting us with diseases, cutting us off from jobs, cutting off all of our jobs that have benefits. Last hire, first fire, living in the projects. Our children are out of order. Our women are out of order. 
our men are in jail. There's no cohesiveness in the family unit among so-called blacks and Hispanics. If America has a 75% divorce rate amongst blacks and Hispanics, it's probably 90%, man. We are all messed up. We are abusing the ways of the Most High, and we're in pitiful case. And we don't see it, man. We think it's an honor to live in the ghetto. We think it's an honor to, let, to shoot one another and kill one another and beat gangbangers. Right. We're proud of that stuff, man. Proud of that stuff. So we are in pitiful case because we abuse the ways of the Most High, man. All you so-called blacks and Hispanics, the majority of you have a Bible in your house. The majority of you know about the Most High, right? You'll definitely tattoo a dagger and scripture on your arm, but then go out and break every other commandment there is, man. So we're in pitiful case. Read. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. That's what we did with the word of the Most High. We cast it away despitefully. I'm not dealing with that Bible stuff. It's modern times. I don't want to hear that Bible stuff. I got to take care of my family. I got to feed my children. I got to work. Why can't I have fun? I'm young. I'm young. I don't want to deal with the Bible. I want to sleep with every woman I see. I want to sleep with every man that I see. I want to have children and not take care of them. I'm young. When I get older, then I'll do better. That's the mentality you so-called blacks and Hispanics, man. That's why you listen to guys like Young Thug. Young Thug is a faggot, man. Let me say again, Young Thug is a faggot. That's right. right. A lot of you so-called blacks and Hispanics, you like that guy, man. Right. That's your hero. That's your, that's your, that's your example. Birdman, another homosexual. Matter of fact, I'll take it a step further. The majority of these rappers are homosexual, man. 99%. All of them. I know y'all Negroes love Jay-Z. Jay-Z's a faggot too, man. Yeah, you gotta be to make that money. Kanye West, do I gotta tell y'all? Do I have to tell you, man? You can't read that man's spirit? Come on, man. All these dudes putting on dresses and putting on heels. Come on, man. LeBron James is a 6'9 power forward in a 6'9 power forward in the NBA, and you dressed up like Flo from Progressive, man? That's the image that of the black man in 2016? Right. Are you crazy, man? Right. Are you crazy? We are in pitiful cases of people, and we don't want to change. We don't want no change, man. Because when people try to come out to our people and give them solutions on how we can get out this condition, all we care about is what's going on in our life. But as long as we are self-absorbed, as a people, we're not going nowhere. We have to come together. We have to unify. We have to see a common enemy. We have to see a common cause. And we got to come together and do it that way. But the so-called white man has taught us to be selfish, man. He teaches us to be selfish through our music we listen to. You see? Through the literature that we read. You know, look at him. Jay-Z, he made it. He's worth half a billion dollars. Look at Dr. Dre. He made it. He's worth a billion dollars. So you said to yourself, well, if I work hard, I, I, me, I could be worth a billion dollars too. What about your brother? What about your brother? What about your sister? Why is it, listen, why is it that Dr. Dre is worth a billion dollars and Negroes is going crazy? Oh, Dr. Dre is worth a billion dollars We finally got a black billionaire. Now question, who did Dr. Dre donate millions of dollars to? What college? What college? White college. Was it Morehouse? No. no. Huh? No. Was it Brown University? No. no. You know who Dr. Dre donated millions of dollars to? Harvard? USC. Wow. University of Southern California. As though these black colleges are struggling, they can't even barely keep the doors open, and you're going to give some of that money to those colleges, and then we're wondering why we're in the condition that we're in? Huh? Because our priorities are all out of order, man. They're all out of order. And the sad part about it is with our people, y'all don't want to hear that. Like, you only want to hear how great you are. It's nothing wrong with telling the black man you are God. Nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with telling the black man about his great history. But in order for you to get that back, in order for you to get back to that apex that you once were, there got to be some changes, man. Y'all got to pull your pants up. Y'all got to get off of selling drugs, stop killing your own people. Bro, yo, bro, that's good, man. I'm glad you did that. Respect, respect. That's, yeah. Hey, you know what I mean? That's real talk. We gotta make some changes. And you know what? 
we gotta tell our women to make some changes too. Because right. a lot of you black sisters, I'm sorry to tell you, a lot of y'all don't wanna hear it, man. It's okay when we tell a black man what's wrong with him. Yeah. But a lot of you sisters, a lot wrong with you too, man. That's right. You gotta wait, you gotta start clothing yourself and stop coming outside half naked. And then asking black men what you looking at. Why'd you wear? You look, you wore that because you know you wanted somebody to look at you. Let's keep it real. And then what happens? That man is looking at you, he's lusting, he sleep with you, but he really don't want you. He just want what you have. You see, you got to dress how you want to be treated. That's what I was taught. So if you want to attract a certain caliber of a man, a man that is intelligent, a man that's about something, you got to carry yourself a certain way. So he's not looking at you only for one thing. Y'all got to get out these abortion clinics, man. Stop killing our babies Sorry, and our soldiers, man. That's stop right. doing that. That's right. Y'all gotta come out these damn strip clubs and stop stripping for a dollar and selling yourself short. Right. And y'all gotta take some of these good brothers, not the not the not the off brothers, but y'all gotta take some of these good brothers off child support, man. Yeah. Cause you got a lot of black brothers truth? out here that want to take care of their children. Yep. That want to be in their children's life. That's right. That want to be there. But because you mad at him because he don't want you no more, right? So now I'm gonna put him on child support. You see? Because that's what the system was created to do. It was created to destroy the black family, to destroy the so-called Latino family. That's why we come out here on the streets. We don't come out here on the streets to yell and scream and tell you you ain't S-H-I-T. That's not why I'm out here. I'm out here to tell you the truth. And sometimes, give me uh, Galatians 4.16, somebody real quick. Sometimes the truth is a little harsh, man. Especially when you're not used to being told the truth. There was a time when I was standing on that side. When I was a nigga, I'm going to tell you straight, right? And somebody had to tell me what I was doing was wrong. My mentality was wrong, man. Somebody had to tell me the truth about that stuff, man. Because I had the same mentality, man. There was a time when I used to be a rapper, and I used to want to rap and get a record deal, and be rich and be on BET, and all that stuff like that, and live in a mansion and have all the women. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, because I love women. You know what I'm saying? I love music, right? But that's not my ultimate goal. I would rather live modestly and you live modestly, and you live modestly, and you live modestly, and you live modestly, and we all live modestly, and I'm rich, you poor, you poor, you poor, you poor, you poor. What's the point, man? That's a lonely existence, especially when you're conscious. Am I right? Yeah. No I doubt. I don't have much time out here, but I just want to say I appreciate what you do. I love what you do. I see you in your house of consciousness. Right. You know, I keep doing what you're doing. God bless you. Bro. I appreciate you, King. All of y'all. Love you, bro. Appreciate you, man. You need the young brothers to be out here reading and learning about the history. Oh, praise you. You too, Kenny. Okay? Appreciate you, man. No doubt. All right, so um, anybody else want to come up? I don't want to hold the time. I know it's dark. McGun, you want to come up? McGun, you want to come up? McGun, Doc. Shut it down. Hey, y'all. Damn, man. All right, go ahead, man. Hey, it's all good. All right, so where we at in second Ezra? Let's continue. What's up, Kenny? No doubt. No doubt. Continue where you left off. Go ahead. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me, and they that have loved my law while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. Right. So that's powerful. That's powerful. I know that was a mouthful, but that's powerful. The Most High said, while we had liberty, and when a place of repentance was open to us, we as a people have despised that. What is the liberty that we have we, right now? The liberty that we have is that Yahweh Shah, Jesus Christ, went to the cross and died for our sins and adopted us back to the Father, pursuant to the book of Galatians, the fourth chapter. So now we have liberty to repent, to come back to the Bible, to change our lives, to change our conditions. We have the opportunity now. But you know what happens with our people? When we come out here and we tell our people the truths of what the Bible is saying. Not the fluff, not the goody stuff, but the truth about what the Bible is saying. The majority of our people, you hate us for it, man. I'm going to give you some examples, right? Christmas is coming. Very something basic. Christmas is coming. How many of you so-called blacks and Hispanics know that Christmas is not in the Bible? Because you say Jesus is the reason for the season. But then when we come out here and we say, okay, we love Christ too. Show us Christmas in the Bible, y'all get mad. Christmas is not in the Bible. As a matter of fact, when you read the Bible with understanding, the Bible tells you that Christ was born in the springtime. How do we know this? 
Because at the time, it tells you, the Roman Empire was collecting taxes. That's not even the date that he was So when you read about the Roman Empire, they collected taxes in the springtime. Secondly, it tells you that there were wise men in the field with their flocks. Love you too. Now, if you know anything about Jerusalem, Jerusalem has four seasons. Just like America has four seasons, Jerusalem has four seasons. So what wise men do you know will be out in the middle of a field with their flocks in December? There will be no grazing of fields with your flock in the middle of December because it's winter. So there's no grass growing. So the Bible is giving you hints about what time of year it was. You know whose birthday is on December 25th? Nah. That is Nimrod. Give me Jeremiah the 10th nah. chapter, somebody. Jeremiah chapter 10. Where is that? Christmas is Nimrod's birthday. When you read the book of Genesis, the 10th chapter, it speaks about King Nimrod, who was the king of the Babylonians. That's that is where we Jesus. get the custom of Christmas from. Is it? Christmas is not in the Bible. There's no Christmas tree in the Bible. There's no Santa Claus. There's no reindeer. There's none of that. And you know what's so sad about all that? The saddest part about all that is your pastors, they know that. How will you go to church and your church has a Christmas tree when the Bible tells you specifically not to have a Christmas tree? How many of y'all know the Bible tells you don't have a Christmas tree? It's in the Bible. You didn't know that? That's okay, sis. You know what? Most I bless you for stopping to listen. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. Read. Hear ye the word of the Lord. No. Hear ye the word which the Lord speak. speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. So the Bible tells us not to learn the way of the heathen. Do me a favor, ask the brother to step aside, please. The Bible tells us don't learn the way of the heathen. Now it's going to get, the heathen means the other nations. The Bible is the book of the Israelites. It is the book of the Israelites. Moses was an Israelite. All the prophets were Israelites. Jesus Christ was an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. All 12 apostles were Israelites. So the Bible tells the children of Israel not to learn the way of the heathen, which is the other nations outside of Israel. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. And the Bible says, don't be dismayed at the signs of heaven. Read on. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. Now we're getting somewhere. The Bible says the customs of the people are vain. Could you hear me, sis? I want to make sure you can hear me. You can come a little closer if you could, right? The Bible says the customs of the people are vain. Read that again. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cut up a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it moves not. Did you hear that, sister? Let's start again. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1. We're going to break it down now. You heard what it said about the custom of decorating a tree with silver and gold. Did you hear when he read that? Now let's read it again. Start from verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. The Bible says don't learn the way of the heathen. That's the, that's the, that's the moral of the story. Don't learn the way of the heathen. Now it's going to get specific which way that we're not supposed to learn. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. Now it's going to get into which way that we're not supposed to learn. It's a specific custom we're not supposed to learn. This is in the Bible that they read in church. Read. For one cut up a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be so not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. So the chapter started off with us telling us, learn not the way of the heathen, right? Then it speaks about a particular custom that they had back there when they took a tree out the forest and they decorated it with silver and gold. That's what he read, right? The Bible says don't learn that. That's where we get the custom of a Christmas tree tree from. And the Bible is telling us not to learn that. So I don't understand how it is that we have churches in our community where they allow the pastor to bring a Christmas tree in the church and they say that they're reading out the Bible. What are they reading? This is why we're out on the highways and the byways. This is why we come out here. And people's like, you know, I hate those guys. 
They're always standing on the corner. They're always yelling and screaming at the top of their lungs. We're out here because we love our people. See, we could, we're all up here young men. We could be doing what everybody else is doing. We could be selling drugs. We could be out here in gangs. We could be out here sleeping with a hundred women, making them pregnant, not taking care of our children. We could be doing a lot of stuff, but you know what we out here doing? We're out here teaching the Bible, man. It's love. It may come across a little rough, a little, a little harsh, but there is such a thing, not for you, sis. Right, not for you, because the most high got your ears open. Some of our people, they don't like us because they say we come across rough. But sometimes love is tough love. Like you have children? Okay, when your child does something wrong, you're like, oh, please don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Come home at nine o'clock. Uh, do good in school. Don't do that. And then when they do something good, something bad in school, right? You get a call from a teacher. You're like, oh, why did you do that? That wasn't nice. No, you're like, why did you do that? Didn't I tell you? Well, that's what we out here doing. This is love. You see what I'm saying? Most are blessed, but you understand, right? Um, from there, right? Give me um. Give me the book of uh, Matthew. Give me, give me Deuteronomy 28. Let's go into, um, let's go into how we know that we're the Israelites. Let's go into slavery. 